Hi, I'm Alex Mitchell and I'm the creator of Cancer Stories. Cancer Stories is a video diary program which is designed to help people like yourself manage their cancer. And the key aim is to record previous patients' experiences, really a wide variety of cancers. And these are patients who are genuine real patients from Leicestershire who've given their consent to uh, allow us to record their story onto DVD or the internet. What we ask those patients is really to give a brief account over 30 or 60 minutes. How did they manage with their diagnosis? And hopefully by watching their account, you'll be able to pick out some common themes from one or more of those videos. And those common themes might be things like what resources are available locally or nationally, or how do families cope, or how do people themselves manage with those awkward stages, either the initial diagnosis or the complications of treatment, or perhaps um, psychological and emotional complications, which are sometimes overlooked. So overall, we hope that by watching the video diary program, you'll be able to take some positives from other people's accounts, and hopefully that will help you better cope with your situation, whatever that is at the current time. Thanks for watching. My name's Elaine, Elaine Strether. I'm 59, I'm married. I have five children. I think about grand 20 grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. I used to work. I was a full-time housekeeper, or well, which they say it means cleaner. Um, I was very active, loved doing lots and lots of things. I was diagnosed in 2010 with mouth cancer and I was devastated. But I'm not now. Elaine Strether has come in today and she's agreed to come and tell us about her cancer diagnosis. And it's a cancer which I know from the records was a squamous cell carcinoma, which is a cancer that you can get of the mouth or other areas like that. And um, I think for the viewers, it might be interesting to just say how you were diagnosed initially. How was it picked up? Right, uh, well, it started off with me getting a few ulcers and soreness in the mouth. And I thought it was down to a back tooth um, the, some of the tooth had broke away and the filling was exposed. Well, being allergic to metals, I thought it was that was causing the problem. So I went to the dentist and he referred me to the hospital at the Royal Infirmary. And um, all came to all that I got mouth cancer. Mm. And in the stages that they give you one to four, I was stage three. So fortunately, if it had gone any further, who knows what had happened. How long was the delay from those first symptoms to the actual diagnosis? Um, I'm not quite sure actually, obviously with things that have gone on, you forget certain things. A few months things. or a I few should weeks. say a few months, yeah. Yeah. Did no you find that, that, did you feel that was a long time to wait or did you feel things were progressing? It, it did, it seemed forever, yeah. but it wasn't. It did seem forever, I was like, you know. It, it's always awkward, that period, isn't yeah. it? When you're waiting for the confirmation. Yeah, you just wanted it to come quickly. Yeah. Get it over and done with you, get it done, you know. Let's to get an find answer, out. basically. Yes. So, um, and it was a struggle. You know, mm. you, you, your mind plays all sorts of tricks with yourself, you know. and Some people think that they know the diagnosis even before they go for the confirmation. It's the first thing that comes into the mind. Mm. It is the first thing because that word is, it's evil, basically evil to everybody, 
you know, you always think that's it, end of life. Yeah, it's a much feared condition, isn't it? Mm. Probably the most feared um, mm. of the medical conditions. And I guess what you're saying is people assume the worst, don't they? Oh, yes. When, you hear, that, when you hear that diagnosis, yeah. people assume that life's basically over at that moment. Yeah, it, it, that's what it me straight away. Yeah. Straight away, you, you just think, well, that's it. I'm, I'm you know, there's no hope. I'm, what's going to happen to my husband, what's going to happen to my children, what's going to happen to my grandchildren? Mm. What are they going to do without me? They ain't going to do this, they ain't going to do that. Mm. You know, I'm finished. I'm not going to be able to work. Ever again, you know, you, you, you're sort of thinking ahead that you're going to be, you're going to die and you, that's it. Mm. End of your life. Mm. Now, um, obviously you've come through to a large extent and you've made progress which is great yeah um, but at that time it, like when things seem quite bleak what uh, what can help in that situation talking to somebody that is actually at the problem mm. Mm. helps you tremendously but unfortunately I didn't have anybody at that time so I just had family and a few friends but they don't understand they don't understand it unless they've been through it. So you need somebody that's actually been through it. I agree. There's something special about uh, meeting another patient yeah. who's had a similar um, condition mm. because you perhaps don't feel as alone with that condition yourself. That's right. Amongst other things. But you never had that chance. I never had that chance, unfortunately. And I think it was just myself that's said to myself, pick yourself up, girl, you, you're strong, you're mm. strong. You've always been a, a stubborn devil, you know. <laughs> always been, you know, the one that's done the decisions in the household. You've got a decision to make now. So you Fight were, it. You were determined. Oh, yes. Even though you'd had that... I could have given up many a times, many, many a times, but no, I'm not going to do it. This ain't going to beat me. Mm. No. And you've got to have that willpower to do it. Yeah. And definitely, it took a long while for that willpower to come into me, but mm. I did it, and I'm here now. And that, that's absolutely fantastic. Mm. I'm really pleased. Let's go back a step and talk about what happened with your treatment. Mm -hmm. After you had the diagnosis, what came next? The operation. So what did they tell you about your diagnosis? I mentioned for the viewers this type of cancer. Yes, they said that um, basically I couldn't take into my head what they was actually saying to me. All I knew at that time, not knew, but what I was taking in was I'm having this operation, they're going to take the, the, some of the bone away, they're going to do a reconstruction, they're going to take a vein from the chest, reconstruct into the mouth, that sort of thing. And that's the only thing that I could take in. You know, you, and you're thinking, oh my God, you know. Um, I mean, it sounds extensive, doesn't it? It sounds, well, there's no word for it. I mean, a 10 hour operation, you think, oh good God, you know. You, you get yourself into a bit of a, mm. a state. And I'll be honest with you, I cry, I cried a lot. Mm. I did cry a lot, mm. you know, and you think, and we right up to the day of the operation, that night, I nearly went home. Mm. I nearly went home, well, and you, forget you it. Go through, you felt you couldn't go through with it. Mm. And that was right up to 12, 12 o'clock midnight. Mm. That's That next day I was going to have it done, and I nearly went mm. home. And I thought, no, pull yourself together, girl. This mm. is to save your life. Mm. And... Like I say, I'm here today. What do you know about your cancer? The actual, where, where it affected and how extensive it was at the time when it was picked up? <laughs> all I knew it was, all I know is it was going to take, it was going to be a big change to my life regarding eating, drinking. I mean, some, some of the thoughts you, you put in the back of the mind and you, you, you can't think about it, you know, you can't, you're trying to put it away. You're trying it, not to dwell on it. You're pushing it away, you're pushing it to the side, you're trying not to dwell on these things, you're trying to not listen to what the doctor's telling you. All you're trying to do is to fight this. And, you're in, and that's all I can explain. 
I can understand that because you wanted to focus on uh, beating it in a way. Yes, yes. That's, 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 that was the... my focus was to beat this. Mm. They've done a good job. Okay, my mouth, my face is not as it used to be. And I, w I will admit, I, I covered up a lot. I had scarves galore. What was your reaction after you'd had the operation? Because initially you for, have to look at you, yourself, don't you, in the mirror and see what you think. For quite a few weeks, I didn't want to look at myself. I, I just didn't want to. But then I did, and then I thought, you know, and obviously you're swelling and, and this, that, and it was quite large at that time. Now it's not, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's going back normal, to me. Mm. Probably to people that look at me and think, you know, it's not, but to me, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going back to the way I am. But it was large and, you know, swelling and that, but it goes down. Mm -hmm. So after the swelling had gone down, <coughs> you began to get a more realistic impression of it. Yes. What was your reaction to how, what was your, your new look, I'll put it that way, your new look after the operation? It was frightening, I've got to admit it was frightening, but I'm thinking, They've done a marvellous job. So in a way, you saw the big change, but mm. you were satisfied in a way that yes. they'd done yeah, the best I, they could. I got visions of it being like a, a, a real scars here, there and everywhere, all over one side of the face, but no, they did absolutely fantastic. And what did they say they had to take away during the procedure? What did they? A lot of the bone, obviously, they went quite deep. Uh, some of the, the um, glands. Is this the jawbone? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, not all completely of the jawbone, but some of the jawbone. Um, as I say, the glands, I can't even know. Lymph glands in the neck. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, a few of those went because they, I think they said they were affected or something to that effect. And um, and that's, but like I said, it takes a lot for what the news listen to the doctors and you, it's sort of going that way, you mm. think. You just, a lot of stuff you can't take in because you're so scared. You're frightened. You are actually frightened. Mm. Frightened to death. Definitely. You know, you, you just can't take a lot of things in. Mm. How long did it take to start to get back on your feet, just physically, after the operation? Oh, a long while, obviously, a long while, I should say. Um, while I was in the hospital, I managed to get out of the bed and have little walks with mm. the nurse. That was, a, that was a step, you know, obviously, because you lose a lot of weight. I mean, there was on constant morphine and... How long were you in hospital for? Uh, I think just over, t uh, I'm not sure, three weeks, I think it was, three. Mm. Went into the fourth week, I think it was, because I did uh, develop an infection because of the flap. They didn't think the, the flap was, was, some of it was slightly dying off. But fortunately, they, they made um, of a solution of an antibiotic that helped to repair it and uh, because obviously if that had died off then it, it wouldn't it, have been successful. That's right. Can you say anything about the flap? Where was the flap? The flap is here. Mm -hmm. you, uh, inside of the mouth it's just here mm -hmm. which goes down and I don't know if you can see that there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I've got stitches all around here obviously where they take the bone, the bone uh, beg pardon, the vein. Yes. And take it up into the mouth to give you a blood supply. Yes. And it's absolutely marvellous what they did. Mm. Absolutely marvellous. So would you say it was months before you started to feel better physically? Mm, I, or weeks? It was months. A few? I've got to admit, admit it was months. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was still, you, you still have depression, you cry in stages, mm -hmm. even when you get home. Mm because there's things that you can't do. You just haven't got the energy, you lose a lot of weight, you can't eat properly, you have to be, And what I was, I had a tube that I had to, have to feed myself with. You know, it's, um, I don't know, it's, but when I think about it, two years down the line, I'm thinking, that was in the past, mm. you know. That was in the past. So tell us now about your psychological recovery and how did you, face that? Psychological, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that I speak to the oncologist lady, Sue Todd, um, she helped me through tremendously. Mm, in psychology, regarding, yeah. yeah. regarding, you know, um, issues. 
weeping, crying and covering myself up and she liked me. She said, why, why are you? Because I used to go to wear covered in scar uh, scarf because I didn't want to show my face because I was embarrassed. But then I pulled myself together because just talking to her. You found that helpful? Helpful, yes, I did. Mm. Just mm. to tell her because family members don't understand. You can, I mean, I could sit and talk to my husband, but they don't understand. What would you say you were struggling with emotionally over that period? Uh, the fact that I wasn't eating normally. You know, like you had mashed potatoes and you roast beefs and all that sort of thing that you, you generally... Was that because your swallowing was affected? Yes. And your chewing was affected as yes, well? Yes, definitely, yes. So your diet had to be modified? Yes, yes. I'd say it was by tube that I was uh, having food. Oh, you had a peg feed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was for quite a long while, and then I thought, no, this ain't gonna happen no more. Mm. So I started to mix. Mix in real foods again? Like baby foods. And then how long did it take before you were able to convert back altogether to regular diet? I should say within a matter of three months. Oh, that's pretty good. I started to have a go. Yeah. And now, what's your diet like? My, my diet is, I'll try anything. <laughs> I sit, I watch my husband eating a packet of crisps and I thought, oh, I could die for a packet of crisps. I mean, it's not a word you should use, but, and I thought, I'm going to try one. So I got the smallest piece I could. I couldn't chew it, obviously, I can't chew. I sucked it to death and it was fantastic, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you found a way around it. I did, as I am with everything else. There's always a, round, a way around. Are there certain things you still have to avoid? No. No, I can eat a sandwich. Definitely eat a sandwich. I can eat steak. Wow. Obviously I can't this side, but I've got this side. Unfortunately I have this side. It doesn't sound like there's many restrictions then. No. That's brilliant. But, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pleased with myself that I push myself and I'm pleased with the the, the, the lady that I speak to. Mm. I'm pleased with the people that have helped me mm. to get through this regarding the operation. I'm over the moon and I hope there's other people like me out there that's got the willpower to do the same as I have. I think that they will help. It'll be helpful if mm. they watch this and they get that inspiration mm. from you and other people as well. Mm. Um, did you go through a difficult period yourself where, I'm talking about after the operation, right. where things didn't seem as bright as far as you were concerned? Yeah, so it was not long after the operation and went home and you, you, you sit there in a chair and you feel like a vegetable. Mm. You just, you haven't got the energy to do anything. You don't think, actually. You, 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 your mind just seems to go and it just wanders. I was just, I was just sat in my conservatory and we have um, a pond with a window in it. Mm. And I sat there every day for weeks just watching me fish, mm. not speaking to nobody, just in a daze, constant daze. Mm and couldn't get out that daze for a while. And I just, I just, I don't know what happened. I think I was just sat there and I thought, I'm feeling sorry for myself and I shouldn't be feeling sorry for myself. Get on with life. Get on with life. Mm. Live it, live it to the full. You're not here forever. Mm. Get on with it, you've had another chance. <laughs> well, you have, when I you agree. think about it. That's a nice way to look at it. Mm. Just get on with it. And I thought, right. Money. But then you start thinking about those poor people that, like I said, got in, that are invalid, that have tremendous scars. They, they live life to the full. Do you mean that there's always somebody who could be worse than you? Definitely. There's mm. somebody worse than you. There's some people that have got cancer that know they're going to die and can't get through it. Mm. You know, it's too late for them people, but not too late for like likes of us, so, mm. you know, I don't know when I'm being out of place on that, but just get on with life, mm. enjoy it. Oh, that's, that's a very, very good advice yeah. there. Yeah. Did you feel 
the family struggled with the complications definitely how your reactions were definitely they did struggle um because obviously they always and my husband was the worst <laughs> excuse me he was devastated because i'm his rock you see mm. i keep him going you know and uh he he, he did lose it he yeah. did lose it and he but he he was there for me all the way all the way as the rest of my family were all the way there was there you know but it's 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 odd they can't get the help they don't have anybody to talk to mm. you know to tell them the pain that they're going through that's a key point it often is. relatives yeah don't actually get any special service that's from right. the NHS to help them that's unless right. they're really really struggling and I mean they do struggle because mm. they they can't they can't cope with it and they don't know how to react with the person that's got this problem they can you know they I don't know they, they how do I put it they they sausage floppy toast they just they can't they can't talk to you about it saying how they feel but I know I mean you know deep down that they are struggling mm. you know it, it's but there's nobody there for them to talk to you know they're trying to look at oh, you know you we're going to look after you and this that and the other but deep down they're hurting big time mm. they're hurting by the same token when <laughs> they see you improve and you start to make real progress often they improve too yes and did yes. you find that in your situation yes i did yes every good day that i had they had a good day mm. you know because um, they want to see you well and the best thing right, is yeah. if you're doing well mm. they'll pick up on that yeah my, i said my husband he was so devastated because i always was the one that made the decisions mm -hmm. um you know you were the everything one i was a strong one yeah and i'd say you know you couldn't do this and he'd agree with it or you could do that and he'd agree with it but then when you're not in that position to do that anymore and they have to take over the roles change it is a big fall for them a big fall Mm. You know, it's um, even t using a cash card. My husband had never used a cash card. I had to learn how to do that. Did anything positive come out of all these things he was having to learn? Yes, I've got <laughs> Yes, um, he knows I'm, I'm the better one now. I'm back to my old self, right? He knows that I'm back to my old self and he can take a back seat a bit now. So, um, did he keep doing any of these things though? You know, he you try, yes, he tries to bless him, but I won't let him now. It's my turn, I'm back to You've normal. Taken on those I've roles taken again. on them roles again, yeah, definitely. I've taken on all those roles again. I mean, there's certain roles I can't do because obviously, with the taking the um, the muscle from the chest, I have problems with my arm, so I found certain things are difficult even unscrewing a jar or he has to do that, you know. So there is some things that I still rely on and bless him, you know. <laughs> mm. Mm. There was another role that you had, uh, you mentioned to me earlier, which was your working role. Yes. You were working before all this, right? Yes, I was, yes. And, um, um, do you want to tell people what happened? I mean, it was interrupted, I guess. It was interrupted. I mean, I was working for a local reta uh, retail centre uh, as a, a full-time cleaner and I loved my job and uh, I would have been there nine years. They have still kept my job open for me which is good, very good of them, but when I'm better to go back and um, but when you, you when you know you've got to have this time off, this length of time and you, you, you with the problems that you're having being told you've got cancer you start worrying about oh my god you've got another worry of the mortgage how's the mortgage going to be paid how's the bills going to be you just everything's going on you know but i'm determined to go back to my job you'd like to go back i'm going to go back there's no you know like to i'm going to go back was your employer understanding yes he's very understanding very understanding indeed in fact they uh, <laughs> their policy is um, you only get paid statutory sick pay for so many weeks or months. When that stops, obviously you don't get anything. But fortunately, um, one of my managers 
brought in a new policy and put it forward to head office, which came in where you get half pay for sick people. And I was getting half pay after about 12 months. It took him 12 months to do it. And I started to get half pay sick pay. And I'm still getting it to this day. They are determined that I go back to my job. And when you've got a good employer like that... It makes a difference. It makes a big difference because I did have the support of them, you know, behind me. When would you think about going back, do you think? I'd go back tomorrow if I could. <laughs> I would. Mm. I definitely would. Are you strong enough to go back? No, because, well, I am strong in myself, you know, um, but I've been told that because I, some of the, the radiotherapy that I had has broken some of the bone up into the jaw and one of the screws came from the plate and that's only because the bone is broken and they want to take it all out. But I have said that I would like to wait until I think the time's right for me to have it out. Mm. And they've agreed with that. And I mean, I do have pain. I won't, I won't lie to you, I, I still do have pain. And I've had a certain amount of tablets and have not agreed with me because of my blood disorder. And um, I'm going to be having acupuncture come the new year to try and do that because pain management have said there's a lot more they can give me because of my blood disorder, you see, affect these certain, certain tablets. Have so. they organised that for you? <coughs> yes, they have, yes. Is it going to be in the hospital or, or in the community? I should be, it's a bit of the hospital as, and um, I shall have so many acupunctures, but that's, you know, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. That's from great, there. because a lot of people say those complementary treatments are, are a very valuable oh, add-on. yes. I mean, I'm on physiotherapy on my arm. You know, it all helps. All helps, and you get in well. Mm. Mm, I agree. Mm. thing now from the perspective of somebody coming new to this like they're just recently diagnosed mm. and then they're watching your video and they're hearing your account is there anything you would say to them about how to face what's coming up anything that you've picked up along the way I think you've got to face it head-on face it head-on and fight it definitely fight it you can give up, you can get in stages where you want to give up, don't. I did, I wanted to give up, but I didn't. I suddenly pull myself together and think, this is it, girl, you're gonna fight it. Mm. Fight it all the way, definitely. Are there any resources that you came across? I know you've mentioned some already, but I'm just double checking with you in a way. Are there any resources that were valuable other information, reading material, I don't know if you even looked on the web, it's not always for no, everyone that. No, it's not, I didn't look on the web. Um, the only thing I did do in one, one stage was, and I didn't mention this earlier, was I did phone up uh, an helpline to speak to a nurse, Macmillan nurse, when I was so desperate. Macmillan helpline, yeah. Yes. And I spoke to the nurse there. And she reassured me on certain issues as well, you know. But at that stage, I'll just constantly cry, 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 cry. Mm. And you will cry. And it's better out than keeping it in. Definitely. In a way, you, you were able to express yourself. Yes. And your emotions. Yeah. You didn't keep them inside. No, don't keep them inside. Let it out. It does help. Because then your mind thinks to yourself, come on, we're going to fight this. Definitely fight it. Mm. When was it you ended up being referred to Sue and the psycho oncology team? Um, I should say it was, I think, about six to eight months down the line. Mm. About six months, I'll say. Yes. Is that something you'd recommend to others? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's because it's a per. You can't. It's. It, you can talk to this person. Things that you can't talk to your family about. Mm. Somebody neutral, isn't it? Yes. From outside. Yeah. If you've got a, an issue with something that you're not, she's there. 
which you can't talk too funnily about it because they don't. Yeah. <coughs> they listen. You probably listen, yeah. but it's just nice to be able to talk to somebody that you can say things. You know, you could say like, "Oh, I've had a bad day today. Meals have been a pain, or whatever." They're there. They listen. Mm. They listen. I mean, your family do listen, but it's, it, I don't know, it's just different, it's just different. You offered any other forms of treatment after the surgery? I had radiotherapy. I could have had chemotherapy, um, but because I was in such a weak state, and again, with my blood disorder, they wouldn't give me the chemotherapy. So I had the radiotherapy. Friday and experience because you have to be measured for a mask, as I call it, where you have to lay on this table and can't move and you are pinned to this table and it's frightening. Um, one stage I got into such a state that I had to ask them to stop because I felt I couldn't breathe. Mm. Um, my husband was with me all the time, I ordered my hand and they let him sit next to me why they actually did it the second time and I was okay with that. Um, music played in the background which helped but you lay in there for about an hour because it's, it's like a mould that has to, it's warm and it has to mould to your face and it was scary, you know, I think it was just the fact that you were laying there for an hour um, but it was worth it and then you just had that when you went in to have your actual radiotherapy. How did you find that subsequently? When you were going that was okay actually. I, 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 I was frightened. You know, I, I will admit I was very, very frightened thinking, oh God, what, you know, what's it going to do to me? But you don't feel anything. You just lay there with the mask on you, obviously you, you pin to the table, but you're not lying there for long. Mm. Although you are on your, on your own in there, aren't you? You are, yes. That's well, okay. Although you can hear them, can't you? You can hear them and they add the music on again. So that helped because some of the tunes you probably um in your head, you know, and or try and think of things that you was going to do that particular day, or and within five ten minutes of it, it went so quick, mm. went so quick. So you, you found that quite manageable. Yes, I mean as the, the radio, I had it for, for six weeks, and as it went on, um, obviously it was more intense because they have to give you more. They started off with a low dose and then give you more. And um, I felt tired sometimes, probably a little bit sicky, but um, it was okay. Mm. I had some burning to the neck. As which, a side effect. Mm, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had some burning to the neck um, and I, it, it was, for some time it started to weep, you know, mm. which was, it's like having a normal burn. Mm. But we, we overcome that, we applied cream and, you know, looked after me and, and after that, no problems. Good. No problems at all. And some of my hair at the bottom uh, did disappear, but has grown back. So I'm quite chuffed with that. <laughs> you lost some hair with the radiotherapy, didn't you? Yes, I did, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, but yeah, so quite chuffed. But it's grown back, so... Let's talk now about the other aspect you mentioned, which is the... Um, the article in the yes. magazine. Tell us about that. Mm. I was, when I was in hospital, and it was, I should say, a few weeks into being in there, I'd picked this magazine up to read, and there was an article in there about a lady that had mouth cancer, and she had reconstruction, but unfortunately it didn't work for her. So they tried again to do something for her, and again it didn't work. And it was so moving that I thought to myself, this poor lady, I've got it, she's not got through it, and I have, I'm fortunate. But that gave me some inspiration to so it didn't scare you to hear a story that wasn't successful in a way? It did in some ways, but then it gave me inspiration to think to myself, right, this ain't going to happen to me, mm. but I felt so sorry for this lady. Mm. 
this magazine, I have still got this magazine to this day and I've kept it and I won't get rid of it. But it was so moving, so moving, but I thought this ain't gonna happen to me. See, that's one of the issues with the video, isn't it? That we want to record people who've had different types of experience. Mm, mm. But some people think, well, don't record any which are scary stories mm. because people will, will get worse watching them. But you're, you're there again, they need to hear about these scary bits. They've mm. got to hear about scary bits. Mm. I mean, it's not like you had just an easy path. All no, no. I found it. I did find it hard. Mm. I did find it hard. And as I say, on many occasions, I could have gave up. Mm. I could have gave up easy. But look where you are now. Yeah. Look what you've come to. Two, year, two years down the line, I'm fine. I'm getting back to my old self. Are you a different person now, after all this, all that you've been through, compared to how you were before the diagnosis of a cancer? I'm still me, but stronger. Life is a bitch, basically. <laughs> so just take what, what life throws at you and makes, it makes you stronger. And I'm, I am strong. I and mean, that's good to hear. You, you've come through it mm. with something taken, you know, out of it in a positive sense. Yeah. You're actually stronger as a person. Yeah. Do you think you would be able to deal with any threats or issues in the future if you had to? Yes, I think I would. Mm. Yes. Because that's a very a brave statement to say that. Yes. That tells me I'm, you're I'm, really yeah, doing well. I mean, I've still got, I mean, I'm still in the hospital for five years. And I think I'm due some kind of MRI scan again sometime during the next few months or whatever. I check up, yeah. Just to see if it's not, because I did leave one of the glands there, mm -hmm. to see if that's been affected. If that's been affected and I have to have that away, obviously it's, it's come back, but I won't be like I was. Mm. I am still going to fight it. It's not going to get better than me. No way. It's good to hear. Yeah. Good to hear. And I think that's a great note to end on because other people will hear that and yeah. maybe they'll take that on board too. Yeah, I hope, I hope they do, yeah. So all the best for the future. Yes. And um, Thank you. I'm sure things will go well. It will. I will make sure it will. Definitely.